Welcome back to Sailing on LaVenture. This week, our episode is packed. You'll learn about bees. You're going to see Alan Dixon's shop of shells. It's amazing the work that he does. You're going kayaking. You're going sailing and snorkeling. Sit back and enjoy. Okay, Lisa, what are we doing? We are going looking for treasures. And I think the most amazing thing about an out island, especially an out island where you have a secluded beach, is you never know what you're going to find. You might find um, sea biscuits, you might find sea glass, you might find all kinds of seashells. Don't know. Well, let's go find out. Okay. So we're out here at Miller's Beach and we're finding a little bit of sea glass. Beautiful day, lots of sun, the ocean, the Atlantic is just beautiful as you can see. Another great day in Long Island. So we follow those threads across the surface of the sand on the beach and that's where we find a lot of the sea glass and some cool shells. They're all washed up and those tide lines are left, again with all kinds of cool treasure. And here's my treasure for the day. <laughs> I, I love these uh, mooring balls, floats. We have a special tree for these. This one, oh, sorry. isn't this exciting? Look, here's one too. Oh, this is a very good day to come. Oh, look at this one. This is a big white one. I might get to start another jar of sea glass. That's awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> So we're having a pretty good haul here this uh, trip to the beach. One of our best hauls here. And uh, just keep finding it. Sea glass, beautiful sea glass. Even some really aged ones that are just amazing. So, and we're only halfway down the beach, so it's pretty dark. So we are in Pastor Alan Dixon's store again. 
And this is Debbie, his wife. Yes. And she has everything. If you ever want to come in here and get something really super special, something that's handmade, handcrafted, and there's nothing like it anywhere in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. then... Debbie, can you tell us a little bit about you and your husband's store here? Oh, well, we have a lot of um, naturally handmade items. Um, we do all the craft work in the store. He makes, um, as you can see from on the wall, there's uh, eagle, seahorses, crafts, um, wall hangings, there are heads, their heads, mirrors. Actually, you've never seen anything quite like this stuff, though. This is, everything he makes is so intricate. Like, look at this seahorse. So, here's how big it is. And it's not just the front. It's completely covered on the back as well. And they're beautiful shells. I don't know where in the world you get all these shells and all this sea glass, but you do a great job. And the sea frogs are always a good seller. People love to have those. The sea frog right there on the table. Yeah. The angel is flying. Gorgeous. They also have a huge assortment of shells. Shells. Coral and all kinds of sea beans. It takes forever to find these things. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we are in Long Island and we are making an incredible Sioux made an egg dish. And what's really amazing is how simple it, it is to cook just something this beautiful. We use eggs, milk, cheese, onion, bell pepper, um, a little bit of spinach, and we put green chili in it with a little paprika, salt, and pepper. And look at this, it's awesome. So you can eat gourmet even though you're on an out island and you have limited resources. Okay, so we are going through the mangroves. Yep, we got our hats on and our bandanas and yeah. all our sun protection and we're yep, cruising we got, through the mangroves. <clears throat> got zinc oxide on our faces. We've got <laughs> umbrella hats, yep. sunglasses. Yep. Uh, Beautiful. What are these day. things called? Neck. Whatever these are called. <clears throat> gators. Can you call we them have gators? gators yeah. <laughs> and it's for a different reason than everybody else has been using the gators. It's just from the side. So Sue and John are behind us somewhere. <laughs> Look how still the water is. And then Lisa has seen turtles and rays, juvenile rays and juvenile turtles, right? Yes. <laughs> Don't move. He slows down. He's just barely staying ahead of us. Okay, there's a ray. Oh my gosh, that's a big ray. It's a huge ray. Can you slow it down a little bit? So we just went by a huge ray, and I'm going to flip this around so you can see this turtle. And I guess he went over by the mangroves. It's pretty shallow out here. Sue and John are back there. Pulling us out. Yeah. Okay, so most of us are here 
well, all of us are here now. And Beth and Diary have their son and daughter along with their two twins. Okay, so, so Tammy. Are, yes. Where are we? What are we doing? We are inside of a big blue turquoise envelope of heaven. And why do we, yes, well, I guess I was going to ask you why we like it so well, much, but look, because it's like heavenly. A, a black thing out there. We think that's oh, moving. What it, is that? Yes, I do think it's moving. What is that? It might be a ray. It's pretty big, isn't it? It's a long ways away. So, so what are we doing? We're in heaven. We're in heaven, and we're about to go snorkeling and try and find some treasures. Okay. We and, always do that. And then we're going to trek back. And what... Someone called this the Gatorade River because that's the color of the river, and you're going to see that in just a minute. Gosh, look at this. It never gets old. Every time we come out here, we just can't believe it. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah, let's see the whelk. You gotta see the whelk. It's a big one. You have, to, you have to acid it to make sure it all becomes nice and shiny. Put it in acid. Let that acid. Pretty. That's wow, crazy. that is. Crazy. Look at that. Pretty nice. Yep. <laughs> is it unbelievable, Tammy? <laughs> for 40 years yeah. back in Wisconsin okay, and my farm mm -hmm. but all the bees are dying because of commercial agriculture mm -hmm. in Europe in all over the world yeah. except in the islands yeah, because true. it's very untouched and pristine area with nature there is no pesticides in her besides and uh, contrary to what people claim that is from Bees are dying from cell towers and diseases and things. It's all from pesticides and herbicides. And this is the proof. Not a single hive dies in Long Island. And they are thriving. 
They're all over the woods and the jungle. They're people's homes and they're very strong and resilient. So I've had beehives here now for 15 years and not a single one has died. So what exactly are you doing right now? We extracted honey uh, two days ago. Or yesterday, huh? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday we extract, ex extracted some of the honey from the hives. We only take 20% of the honey. We don't take too much. Why but don't you do that? Why do you just take 20%? <laughs> because the bees need to live. You can't disturb them too much. Commercial beehivers, uh, beekeepers, they usually take almost 80% of the honey and then they give them sugar water mm -hmm. to survive. And sugar water is going to make them weak and prone to disease and they get mite and all other infectious diseases in their larvae and they all die. So we, we are usually no more than 20% should be harvested from any beehive. So right now, oh gosh, look at this um, beautiful honey. Right now I'm basically taking the, this is raw honey and some of these are wax pieces that came off during the process of uh, so extraction. So what is, um, why is the honey so dark? It's uh, uh, island honey is dark. Mm -hmm. It's from the trees, you know, from the trees in the woods. There is no monoculture here. It's all whatever nature is. So that makes the unique taste of this tropical honey is quite different than the honey you get in land. You've heard of clover honey, alfalfa honey, wildflower honey. Those are monocultures that bees have no choice but to take honey from them. But here, they go in the woods. So this is what you get in nature, true nature, without any human interference. They're very dark honey, and it's more liquid than the ones you get back home. Back home is they're more uh, jelly type, harder if you, if you know honey, real honey back home. So this is more liquid and also is darker and has a quite different taste than the other honey you get in land. So yeah. do you go ahead and try to get this honey out, or what's it called when you extract the honey from the hive? Is that what it's called? Or what do you call do? it honey extraction or harvesting honey. Harvesting honey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you do this once every... Once a year, you should Once a year, yeah, maybe in February or yeah. March. Yeah, because I'm here, but the ideal time is uh, August, September. And why would that be? That's like the end of the summer. So okay. the, the supply is a lot. After that, the flowers become less. So bees start using it, which is okay. We don't have as much anyways. Okay, so you have those flat little filter things that we'll have to talk about those later, but they build the combs in there? Yeah, the, yeah, okay. the combs and the uh, frames. The frames. And frames. what happens when the frames get all full? Do you just watch them to make sure you can add another frame? Oh, you can keep adding boxes with frames on top of it. They keep filling it up. Uh, some, I've had hives that has like seven, eight, nine, Boxes. Oh, no, you have never seen it? I have. Okay, yeah. I want to film it. Yeah. Well, you can film the. Maybe safer. Okay. okay. Lisa, come this way. We're gonna go. Oh, look at them here. This is another thing I gotta show you. This, the, these, these plants uh, store honey. I mean, store water. Store water, right? And they're, they're. That's their drinking spot. This is, this is why there's so many here. And they then, and then one. And they drink water. And once in a while, I fill up the. I fill it up with you do? I give water because they drain Whenever it. I never I never bother these these guys with, with honey. Yeah, look at it. Oh yeah. This would be a nice real wild honey. I mean wild wild honey. I send a both console. Go closer, then the light will adjust, yeah. and you can actually. Yeah, yeah. We didn't touch this hive because they're safe. Yeah. The hive, the hive. Extract the hive. And that hive is a new. Hive. It's only two years old. That's why. Those are their home. You don't know If you go closer, and friend, you can see some of them bringing pollen. It's on the legs, the yellow or orange pollen on the legs. On the legs. You take it in. Oh, see? I can see it. You see that? That's probably, yeah. That's for food. Some of them are orange, some of them are yellow and white. They take all that. That's the source of protein for, for their larvae.
Sammy, what's happening? Uh, what's happening is Shire and Bob are intensely telling Sue how to use a mask properly, <laughs> and she's taking it very well. Yeah, you are. You're a very good sport. <laughs> Bobby, she's like, I, I think <laughs> Sue's ready to scuba dive. What's <laughs> <laughs> up? <laughs> Not uh, so. Say something. Uh, how do you like the trip? Uh, it's nice, yeah. You like it? Yeah, sure. That was it? You're yeah. a good snorkeler. Okay. <laughs> I, I like snorkeling. <laughs> I have to Here we go with... Randy. With the host, Randy. with the say host egg. Randy egg. And, 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 and Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. Egg. say something Randy, <laughs> Captain okay, so Randy. This is our most favorite thing in the whole wide world is to go out with our best friends on the boat on a perfect day when it's calm. Okay. Thank you. Well, and we snorkeled over a great reef, right? Yeah. So perfect reef, perfect. And Randy plays has the best music. The best list. playlist ever. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's an excuse for a day on the water to listen to good music. Any as day well. you can Bob's hear the right. monkeys is a good day. <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely. We're gonna throw a bottle out, a message in a bottle. You know, sing song, message in a bottle. Uh -huh. Okay, what is your um, goal with this, Tammy? Just to communicate with some extraterrestrial being in Ireland. To communicate with the world. With the world. You know, <laughs> let them know that we're here. We all... But we want to send it off. You guys will do it. You're the perfect uh, vehicle to send it off. When you get to the Gulf Stream, you just Yeah, drop we'll it. do it and then that'll that'll take it somewhere yeah, really fine. Okay, what's your gear? Okay, so what did you put in your in your bottle? I saw that you put something about COVID. Okay, first I put a Stella Maris pamphlet. I was at Jill's office and they have this whole pamphlet about Stella Maris and buying land. Um, so I ripped off the front page where the map is of it and I put it in there. And then I wrote a note, like a five page note, saying some things are happening today. Um, and like say, a time capsule. Yeah. So here it is. A party. And there's a new Cause he won't let God put him in Okay, John, what was your favorite thing on Long Island this week? Well, it's hard to pick one favorite thing. Everything we did was very enjoyable. Uh, I think snorkeling was one of my favorite things to do. Uh, swimming out to the reefs and seeing the different colors, uh, the different types of fish, it was just beautiful. So that was probably my favorite thing to do. Uh, but we really enjoyed uh, snorkeling, uh, kayaking, and all the adventures the island has to offer. So, Sue, what are some of your favorite memories this week in Long Island? Which you did great. You got a foundation in yes, now. Yes, thank you. Progress, not perfection. <laughs> and um, uh, we kayaked. That was another ex good experience. Very good. And I have enjoyed meeting all of Randy and Lisa's friends. Everybody, everyone here has been so warm and welcoming. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed our visit, and we hate to leave. Um, I've got, John and I have gotten to experience Out Island Living first. Thanks everyone for watching this week. 
It was an action-packed episode. Thanks to John and Sue, our friends visiting on Long Island and experiencing Out Island life. Thanks, Debbie Dixon, for the tour of the shop. We learned so much about Alan's amazing artwork. And thanks again, Shire, for all the information in the tour on bees and your amazing gardens. Stay tuned for more upcoming adventures. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everyone.